Starring Loretta Young in Children, This Is Your Father. The story of a veteran's reunion with his wife and family after four years overseas separation. On the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gain Whitman. How's the weather in your neighborhood? The forecast is colder soon. And that's one thing about the weather. You never know just how soon. Don't let a sudden freeze-up catch your car without protection. Go to your dealer or service station tomorrow for a checkup. Have rust and scale cleaned out with DuPont Cooling System Cleanser. Protect the system against leaks by pouring in a bottle of DuPont Cooling System Sealer. Then add a DuPont Antifreeze. Xerox, War Emergency Zerone, or Five Star. Each gives you double protection against freezing and against rust and corrosion. All of these car protection products are examples of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. The DuPont Company presents Children, This Is Your Father, starring Loretta Young as Peggy Lester on The Cavalcade of America. B.E. Day, B.J. Day, Victory. Family men overseas disregarded the exuberant celebrations. To them, victory was a big seven-letter word that meant home. Home to families they'd left. Families like that of Lieutenant Sam Lester and his wife, Peggy. Mama, can I have another little cake? You mean may you, Karen? Yes, you may. (laughs) Ellie, you have another one. You're slim enough. You can afford it. Oh, thanks. And I can afford it, too, because I got my allotment checked today. Peg, hmm? what do you hear from Sam? Oh, same old weather reports. <laughs> My darling is such a lousy letter writer. I haven't the faintest idea what he's doing, except that he's still in charge of that supply depot in France. Well, how do the children feel about him? I mean, do they remember him? Oh, Mickey does, a teeny bit. But Karen, not at all. She was just an infant when he left. You know, Sam's been away almost four years now. This is my daddy's picture. Yes, Karen, I know. He's very nice looking, isn't he? He's beautiful, and he's very tall and very strong. (laughs) And in the war, he killed a thousand Germans all by himself. And he got lots and lots of medals from General Eisen. Ah, Karen, darling, imagination is a nice thing to have. But you mustn't let it run away with you, you know. Hey, Mm -hmm. this beautiful room. Where did you ever find a decorator? I didn't. I painted it myself. Peg Lester, you did. I certainly did, all by myself. Do you really like it? Why, it's wonderful, positively (laughs) professional. As if you've been swinging a paintbrush all your life. Well, as long as you said such very nice things about my paint job and seeing you're my very best friend, I'll let you in on a little secret. What? After wearing myself out taking the paper off one complete wall, I discovered I could paint right over the paper. Not (laughs) really. And you can't even tell. (laughs) Oh, my, my, the wonders of science. (laughs) Oh, there's Mickey. Well, not the one who's barking. That's gorgeous. That's a family mutt. (laughs) Well, hello, gorgeous. Oh, my, he's a friendly little thing. Yes, he is. I mean, isn't she? (laughs) Mickey picked her up about two months ago and talked me into keeping her as a watchdog. Well, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Without a man in the house, you need one. Ellie, if a burglar came along, that dog would hurl herself at him and lick his shoelaces in abject adoration. (laughs) She's so darn friendly, it's shameless. Hey, Mom! Ah, here is the master of the Lester clan. Hello, Mickey. Hello. Mom, you Mm -hmm. know what Buster Klein just told me about his father? No, what? He got a bullet in his leg, and the purple heart, and a silver star on account of he cleaned out a nest of Jeff and made a bunch of other Jeff surrender. He got a silver star, Mom. That's fine, Mickey. Gosh, Buster sure is lucky having a dad like that. Well, for goodness sake, your father's no slouch. Just because he's modest and doesn't make a lot of fuss about how many Germans surrendered to him or or how he wiped out a pillbox. When? When did he wipe out a pillbox? Well, uh, during a battle. Which battle? Well, uh, the Battle of the Bulge. That was the turning point of the whole European war. Oh, boy. We like your busting. Oh, no, no. uh, I uh, I mean, it's time for your milk, kids. Uh, Take Karen into the kitchen and pour out two big glasses. Okay. I'll tell Buster later. Come on, Karen. Did you hear that, Karen? What Mom just said about Dad? Yeah, gee. Oh, Peg. And you told Karen not to let her imagination run away with her. Oh, I know, Ellie, but I can't help it. I'm not going to let Mickey feel for a single instant that his father is any less heroic than anybody else's father. Well, for goodness sake, if they'd given Sam combat duty like he wanted, he'd simply be covered with silver stars and oak leaf clusters and kisses from French generals. Well, I think it was very smart of the Army not to let his experience in organization and supply go to waste. Oh, so do I. 
I'm pretty darn grateful, too. But it's hard to make the children see that doing a necessary but unexciting job can be heroic, too. They go for the active stuff. And since Sam didn't get a chance to kill Germans behind a desk in a supply depot, well, I... But I have to embroider a little. I know, of course, but Sam may find he has a lot to live up to when he comes home. When he comes home. Them's mighty pretty words, Ellie. I suppose you've imagined his homecoming scene a dozen different ways. A hundred different ways. And each one was more dramatic and thrilling than the last. But I know how it'll really happen. One day Sam will walk in the door and Karen will pipe up with, Mama, who that man? <laughs> A drone. You gotta get on the other side of the table. You can't be shooting right alongside of me. You're a Jap. I am not a Jap. I'm an American just like you. You are not. You're a Jap. <laughs> and now you're a dead Jap. Lie down. I am not a dead Jap. I'm not. Mama! Lady hey, Mickey, can't you let Karen be an American once in a while? You've made her play Jap so much that her eyes are beginning to slant. Oh, they are not. And besides, having to be a Jap all the time, they give her an inferiority complex. Well, you wouldn't want to... It's a funny smell. It's coming from the laundry room. The laundry room? <gasps> Holy catfish! The iron! What about the iron? What did you do to it? Oh, my goodness. It's burned a hole right through the ironing board pad. Mickey, did you plug that iron in? Gosh, Mom, I was only making believe I was in the engineer's and... Hooking up a dynamite charge, and, well, I guess I just forgot to unhook it. What are you trying to do, Mickey? Burn the house down over our heads, behind our backs? I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times, not to fiddle with the electrical equipment. Now, look at the ironing board. It's ruined. And probably the iron, too. Mickey, I just have no choice in the matter. I have got to give you a whipping. Run away, Mickey. Run away and hide. Don't be a drone. I'm not afraid. Come here, Mickey. Bend over. Oh, shut up, gorgeous. This is going to hurt me more than it will you. Telephone. Someone's on the telephone, Mama. Aren't you going to say hello? Oh, I suppose I'll have to. Well, get up, Mickey. But this is only a temporary reprieve. We'll pick up right where we left off. Hello? Yes, yes, this is Miss Lester. Oh, telegram. Read it to me, please. Yes? Yes? Oh, I can't believe it. Uh, are you sure that's what it said? Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you a thousand times. Oh, Western Union, I love you. Children. Children, he's coming home. Your father's coming home. home. Oh, wait. Gosh, Mom, do you mean it? Yes, tomorrow morning on the 1043. Oh, my darlings, it's too wonderful. It's just too wonderful to be true. Then why are you crying? I don't know, honey. I guess because I'm so happy. Mickey, darling, your father's coming home. And I'll never have to whip you again. Stay close to me, kids. We, we don't want to miss him, you know. Do you see him anywhere, Mom? Uh, Do you see him? No, not yet. There are just too many people in the way. Hey! Sam! Oh, Pam! Sam, oh, my darling. Dearest. <gasps> oh, oh, Sam, darling. Let me look at you. Oh, my dear. Your hair has turned gray. Gosh, Peg. You look wonderful. Do I? And, and these are our kids. Yes, darling. Children, this is your father. Hello, Mickey. Hello. Hello, Karen. Well, aren't you going to say something to me? You're not as pretty as your picture. Oh, Karen! <laughs> Come on, kids. Don't hang back. Sam, this will be the first time you've walked into our house in almost four years. I feel as if I ought to carry you over the threshold or something. <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh, oh, Sam, here, put me down. Hey, who's that? 
Right, Mom. Her name is gorgeous. She'll probably cover you with kisses. She's a very affectionate type of animal. Mm. Well, hello, gorgeous. Oh, for goodness sake. I've never seen her act like that before. Well, maybe she doesn't like me. Don't be silly, darling. And do put me down. Oh, something. okay, my lady. Oh, be quiet, you idiot. Mickey, take her outside. Okay, Mom. Come on, gorgeous. Karen, you go along too, dear. Yes, Mama. Yes. Well, darling, what do you think of your children? Oh, you've done a swell job, Peg. They're wonderful. Oh, they have a wonderful father. I'm not so sure they think so. Oh, darling, they're just shy. Why, in a few hours, I I won't be able to pry them off your lap with a crowbar. (laughs) I hope you're right. (laughs) Say, the house looks different. Why, you had it done over. Had it done over? Huh, I did it over myself. A little paint, a little chintz, and a lot of elbow grease. (laughs) Peg, you're terrific. Oh, darling. When I went away, you couldn't park the car without smashing a fender. You couldn't put a nail in the wall without smashing a thumb and... Well, now look at it. Oh, you. mister, you ain't seen nothing yet. Remember that temperamental furnace of ours? Well, I got it tamed and eating right out of my hand. Peg, honest to goodness, I, I don't think I'm needed here. Oh, darling, don't be a droon. A what? A droon. It's the children's favorite word. It, it, it means a cross between a drip and a goon. Hmm. I'll have to remember that. (laughs) Another piece of pie, darling? Uh, No, thanks, Peg. Oh, for heaven's sake, kids, what's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Well, this morning you had a hundred questions you were going to ask your dad. Oh, it's all right, Peg. Leave him alone. Uh, Dad? Uh, Yes, Mickey? Will you please pass the Derby Madge? Certainly. The what? The Derby Madge, darling. That's the bread and jam spelled backwards. Mickey has a mania for pronouncing things backwards. Oh, oh, I get it. <laughs> now, here you are, uh, Yekim. Pardon? Yekim. Mickey, spelled backwards. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> uh... Uh, uh. <laughs> Something tells me I've just been a groom. Uh, no, darling, it's droon with a D. Mother, <laughs> can I? What comes out of the chimney? Smoke. Your, Your wish and my wish will never be broke. What in the name of Tom? They're making their wish. Touch, Touch red, red, my wish will be said. Touch green, my wish will be seen. Touch blue, my wish will come true. That, darling, is what happens in this house when two people say the same thing at the same time. Oh, I see. Well, Mickey, uh, what did you wish? I'm not allowed to tell. It won't come true then. I wish that Daddy would give us our souvenirs. Karen. Well, honey, I will give them to you just as soon as my bags get here. What have you got for me? Well, let me see now. I think there's a pretty French doll for oh, you. Oh, goody. And for Mickey, a wristwatch. No German helmet? Or a bombshell? Or even a bayonet? Well, no. no. Gosh. Dick Gordon's dad brought him a German helmet. Well, unfortunately, I didn't come in contact with any armed Germans, so I couldn't... You didn't? Well, what about the time you wiped out that pillbox? I wiped out a pillbox? Sure, in the Battle of the Bulls. Mom told us all about how Lunch you Lunch is over, children. Go outside and play now. But, Mom, didn't you say that... Outside. outside. Take gorgeous for lunch and run along now, both of you. Go on. Oh, <laughs> all right. But what good's a wristwatch? You can get them here. Peg, just what did you tell them about me and a German pillbox? Nothing. Nothing at all, darling. Peg, I want to know. Oh, for goodness sake, dear. It was just a little bedtime story I made up. Well, you know you were the hero of all of our stories. But, Peg, that sort of thing is dangerous. Suppose a story like that got around. Now, Sam, don't be ridiculous. I just told it to the children. Couldn't possibly go any further. I'll get it. Hello? Why, hello, Mr. Whitefield. Yes, it's true. He's back. Oh, just wonderful. Yes, of course, hold on. Sam, darling, it's your old boss. Oh, thanks. Hello, Mr. Whitefield. Uh, just this morning. <laughs> Great, thanks. What? Just a second, please. So the story couldn't possibly go any further. Uh, what do you mean? Whitefield wants me to come down to the office to show off my medals. He says it's all over town about me capturing a whole German regiment single-handed. <laughs> Listening to Loretta Young in the dramatic story, Children, This Is Your Father, on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. (laughs) 
As the second half of our play opens, Lieutenant Sam Lester has returned home. He's having a little trouble explaining to the community about his pre-homecoming build-up. Now, listen, Mayor, I, I appreciate your phoning me. The sentiment is, is wonderful, but I tell you, I'm not a hero. No, no, I'm not being modest. All I did in this war was sit behind a desk in a supply depot in France. The, the only Germans I saw were prisoners. I, I... Oh, it's all an embarrassing figment of my son's imagination. Yes, I, I'm sorry, Mayor. Uh, good day, sir. Daddy! Uh, oh, in here, Karen. Daddy. Yes, dear. I think you're awful nice. You do? I like you very much. Well, that's just swell, honey. Can I have a nickel for ice cream? Sure, sure thing, baby. Here you are. Oh, thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Sam, was that Karen who just went out? Yep, I gave her a nickel for ice cream. Oh, Sam, you shouldn't have. She only asked you because I refused. She's not allowed to have ice cream before supper. Oh, well, maybe you're too hard on her. Well, don't you be too easy. Children need discipline. And that reminds me, Mickey's in the kitchen. And I want you to give him a good talking to. What about? Well, he's been tinkering with the electrical appliances again. Oh, Sam, he's just got to stop behaving like a young Tom Edison II. I'll talk to him. Thank you, darling. And remember, be firm. Well, I talked to Mickey. I heard you. Sam, you were about as firm as melted ice cream. Only a day before you came back, he burned out the iron, and I was all set to give him a whipping. Well, reasoning with him is a much better way, Peg. He's given me his word that he won't go anywhere near those electrical gadgets oh. again. Sam, darling, you're going to have to be so much more severe with the children. Well, I, I happen to think that kindness gets you first. <laughs> Karen, <laughs> what is it, darling? I fell down and hurt my knee. Oh, poor baby. Come here. Daddy will fix it for you. No. I want my mama. I don't like you. That's how it is, Ellie. My kids don't like me. Now, Sam. Peg's ashamed of me. Why, Sam? Well, why else did she make up stories about how I captured Germans and pillboxes and make a fool of me all over town? Sam, I know all about that. I was there when it happened. But Peg only... Had... I know, I know. For the kids. But why didn't she tell them the truth? Nothing to hide. Oh, Sam. Sam, don't you think you're taking it all a little too seriously? Uh, how can I help it? Ever since I've been home, I felt as if I were outside looking in. Oh, if, if you could have seen the way they talked about you and, and missed you, and the way they carried on when they heard you were coming back... Well, the fact remains that everything seemed to go on very well without me. Apparently much better. Sam Lester, you're talking through your hat. Why, the... The conversion that Peg had to make when you left was as painful as the reconversion is for you now. Oh, just be patient, Sam. Everything will fall into its right place again. I certainly hope so. Anybody home? And I don't mean you, you friendly thing. Well, oh, somebody in the kitchen anyway. Oh, it's you, Mickey. Yeah. Mickey, what were you doing with that waffle iron? Nothing. I mean, I was just making a little experiment. Mickey, you gave me your word that you wouldn't fiddle with the electrical gadgets. Well, I just wanted to see who would make those same square dimples on cardboard. I didn't mean to break it. Your mother said it was useless to try and reason with you. Well, there's only one way left. No! I'm sorry, Mickey, but you asked for it. Oh. Here we go. Let me go! It's almost 8 o'clock. Mickey's never stayed out this late before. Not without telling me first. Oh, I can't imagine what's happened. Peg, I suppose I may as well tell you. When I came home this afternoon, I found Mickey fiddling with the waffle iron. My waffle iron? Mm -hmm. Why, it's practically the most precious possession I... Oh, honestly, Sam, once and for all, that boy ought to be whipped. That's what I thought, too. So I did it. You... You mean you actually gave Mickey a whipping? Yes. Oh, Sam, how could you... How could you lay a finger on him, your own flesh and blood? 
Oh, Sam, you never should have done it. But, Peg, you yourself just said that he... It doesn't matter what I just said. You never should have done it. Why, he... He hardly knows you. It was like being whipped by a... By a stranger. Thank you. I'm glad to know how you feel about me. Oh, Sam, you don't know Mickey the way I do. Beating him with... With his sensitive soul. And his sensitive skin. Sam, where did you whip him? In the kitchen. Oh, my poor baby. His pride must be smarting all over. No, only on the proper place. He's run away. That's what's happened. He's run away from home. Sam, you've got to call the police. Hey, for heaven's sake, do you want to wake Karen? Well, we've got to do something. We can't just sit here while Mickey is running away in some dirty old boxcar. Sam, if you don't call the police, I will. If you do, I'm walking out of this house for good. Sam! I mean it, Peg. Either I'm the head of this house or you are. And if you are, then there's no place here for me. Sam! It's up to you, Peg. You brute. I won't call the police, but you'll be sorry when they bring home our eldest child, our only son. When they bring him here on a stretcher, all limp and white, and maybe. maybe even. Flash. <laughs> Mickey. Oh, my darling, I've been so worried about you. Oh, darling, I know why you did it. You can tell your mother everything. Mickey, dearest, where did you go? To the movies with Buster Klein. Didn't Mrs. Klein tell you? To the movies. It was a double horror bill. Oh, Mickey. And I've been sitting here wearing myself into a pink fit. Peg, I told you there was nothing to worry about. Oh, gosh, Dad. Aren't women silly? Were... Were you talking to me? Uh-huh. I said, aren't women silly? Oh. oh. Well, uh, maybe they are. But next time you go away to the movies, you'd better get permission first. Okay, Dad. I don't want no more licking. Gosh, you certainly pack a mean wallop. You know, Mom, he hits much harder than you do. Oh, does it hurt, dear? Nah, I'm no buttercup. <laughs> What's the matter? What's all the noise oh. about? Oh, I told you we'd wake her. Everything's all right, Karen, dear. Come on, honey. Mommy will carry you back upstairs. No, I want Daddy to carry me. You do? I mean, sure thing, honey. Here we go. <laughs> hey, look at Gorgeous. She's looking Dad's shoes. Well, well what do you know? No- Hey, what comes out of the chimney? Smoke. Your, Your wish, wish and my, my wish, wish will, will never, never be broke. broke. Touch green, my wish will be seen. Touch green, my wish will be seen. Touch red, my wish will be said. Touch red, my wish will be said. Touch blue, my wish will come true. Touch blue, what the heck? My wish has come true. Oh, <laughs> Our star, Loretta Young, will return in just a moment to our cavalcade microphone. Now, here is Gain Whitman. You climb into the old bus, load in the family, tell the man at the gasoline pump, fill her up, please, with a blissful sigh, and then the open road again. There were many times during the war when you wondered if that open road was still there. Well, there it is. Good gasoline, too. The motor purrs. You roll smoothly along. Fall is in the air. Are those leaves over there on the hill beginning to turn... If it isn't the leaves that are red and gold, it's the soft sunshine of fall, golden with just a little chill in the air. Just rolling along is wonderful. Just feeling the car respond to your touch is a thrill you've not had for a long time. Wait a minute, though. Two or three months ago, you weren't using your car so much, were you? Can you be sure it's in the best condition? How about the pre-war tire? How about that retread with the old tube and the forgotten patch? Too much speed or one bad bump can mean a blowout and tragedy. How about you, the driver? Maybe you're out of practice. Maybe your judgment of speed and distance aren't as keen as they used to be. It takes time to learn to drive again in traffic. Now that you can roll into a service station and say, fill her up, it's a temptation to ride just for the fun of it. Everybody's doing it, but not everybody is driving carefully. Accidents are increasing. The man who forgets the painted line in the middle of the highway, who passes on curves, who speeds and cuts in, is a public menace. Drive wisely. Have your car checked for any mechanical weakness. Careful drivers generally take good care of the appearance of their cars, too. Scratches and dents in fenders mean not only bad appearance, but rust. Rust destroys metal. 
Take your car to the DuPont authorized refinisher near you. He's an expert in the use of Duco and other DuPont finishes, made especially to protect and beautify your car. And he has Duco, which exactly matches the color of your automobile. Use DuPont number no. 7 polish to remove traffic film quickly and easily and restore luster. Or use DuPont Duco cleaner and then apply Duco wax, which protects the finish from dirt, moisture, and the ultraviolet rays of the sun and gives a clear, brilliant luster which lasts for months. And, of course, protect your car against a freeze-up this winter with the DuPont Antifreeze. All of these products for the protection of your car are DuPont Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. And now, here is the star of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, Loretta Young. With victory won, the National War Fund campaign needs our help no less. The need is just as great. Every dollar we contribute will do a three-way job, helping our armed forces, aiding our friends and allies overseas, and assisting neighbors in distress here at home. Now, many servicemen will not be so fortunate as Lieutenant Sam Lester in our story. Others will require financial assistance, hospital care, or vocational guidance. Our dimes and dollars will help many servicemen bridge the gap between G.I. and civilian life. The War Fund Drive needs your contribution to carry on its worthy work in your own community. Next week, Cavalcade will tell the story of Johnny Adams, who comes home to a tweed suit, a white shirt, and a bright necktie after four years of Army olive drab. Readjustment for Johnny is complicated by many problems, including the girl he left behind. Next week, you will hear the sometimes tender, sometimes humorous story of a typical young American, his girl and his future, when Cavalcade presents Johnny Comes Home. Our stars will be Robert Walker and Susan Peters. Don't forget to tune in next Monday at the same time to hear Robert Walker and Susan Peters in Johnny Comes Home. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our play was written by Priscilla Kent. Loretta Young may currently be seen in the international picture production, Along Came Jones. With Miss Young in tonight's Cavalcade were Gail Gordon as Lieutenant Sam, Marlene Ames as Karen, and Tommy Bernard as Mickey. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to Robert Walker and Susan Peters in Johnny Comes Home on the Cavalcade of America. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is the National Broadcasting Company.